What's the difference between Dubai and Abu Dhabi? Well, the people in Dubai don't watch Scooby-Doo, but the people in Abu Dhabi do! <laughs> Roll the intro. Welcome back, Goody Two Shoes checking in. If you're new to the channel, do me a favor, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and click that bell icon so you don't miss when I drop a new video. Quick recap. So, last time I was telling you about my seven day cruise out of Puerto Rico through the Caribbean. And after I got home from that trip, my next trip to Dubai was less than 24 hours. So I had to unpack and I didn't really have what I wanted to wear laid out to repack. So I still had to find stuff to wear and I almost missed my flight because I was running behind. So I was trying to hurry up, grab stuff, throw it in the bag. And by the time I got to the airport, I couldn't even find, I didn't even have time to find a park. So I had to valet park it. Check it out. We got out of the airport in just enough time to see the fireworks. I booked a full day desert tour that included dinner and a show, but before the show there was an opportunity to ride and take pictures with the camel. There was four wheelers and dune buggies available to rent, but the tour included going sand bashing on the dunes. This was so much fun, but next time I want to try it with the dune buggies. Henna stayed on my hand for like two weeks.
The marina is amazing. It's surrounded by lovely restaurants and stores, and I took a speedboat tour to see some of Dubai's great landmarks. There's a massive Ferris wheel in London just like this called the London Eye where you can see over the city at the top. The Burj Al Arab is the world's only seven-star hotel that houses nine restaurants, four pools, a private beach, and a luxurious spa. On average, a night at this hotel starts upwards from $1,000. Dubai Miracle Garden is the world's largest natural flower garden that features larger than life size figures that are covered in cleverly coordinated flowers. It's such a beautiful scenery.
Dubai Mall is without question the largest mall I've ever been to. It also neighbors some of Dubai's popular landmarks and sites like the Dubai Underwater Zoo, the Dubai Fountain, and Burj Khalifa. The Burj Khalifa is the tallest tower in the world. It just so happens that I visited on the 10 year anniversary of its opening back in January 2010. This tower has 163 floors and the elevator inside goes 22 miles per hour taking you to the top within a matter of seconds. The view from above the city is mesmerizing. Leaving out of the Burj Khalifa was this model city of Dubai Creek where they are building new living spaces. The realtor Jinten sent me some information and pictures of the apartments. At the time, the asking price for a one bedroom apartment in Dubai Creek was $310,000. It could be more now, but if you're ever looking to buy property in Dubai, Jitten's contact information is in the description below. a day tour to the city of Abu Dhabi and along the way visited a dates market. Dates are a fruit that helps lower cholesterol and improves bone health.
had a chance to visit Ferrari World, home to some of the fastest roller coasters. You may or may not recognize the Etihad Towers from that scene in the Fast and the Furious 7 when they jump from one tower to the next in a car. The Sheikh Zayed Grand Mosque was the highlight of my experience in Abu Dhabi, a sacred place for prayers and is also known for its 82 domes, 1,000 columns, the world's largest hand knotted carpet and 24 karat gold chandeliers. Women are required to be fully covered and they provide you with a traditional gown. So my sister actually found this flight leaving out of Charleston. It was $887. And typically around, you know, the holiday, around that time of the year, prices are generally like $1,300, $1,400 leaving out of Charleston. So the only thing was, we was coming back from a trip within, you know, the same day, so it was a tight window. But I was like, whatever, let's just do it. Because I had, um, I had like, I use this thing that's called shop kicks and you get like points and rebates and stuff like that. I'll make a video about that. I had a hundred dollar, you know, gift card from shop kicks and I had a hundred dollar Delta Airline gift card for Christmas. So that took off $200 and I only had to pay $667 for my flight from Charleston to Dubai. I hear a lot of people say that Dubai is very expensive and you have to have a lot of money when you go to visit Dubai. But when I went, I didn't see that if that makes sense I mean things were in my opinion you know generally priced the same as it is in the US I mean and the thing about Dubai is they actually take they take the AED they take euro they take pound and I, I think some places they did take US US dollars so Maybe it's because we converted our money when we got there. It didn't seem as expensive, but if you're 
doing like, you know, yacht parties, the steak and lobster every night for dinner, um, you know, getting a driver while you're there, then yeah, it's going to be costly. But if you're doing, you know, the regular sightseeing, trying local restaurants and stuff like that, it's, it's not that expensive. So, I mean, you can budget wisely and still have a good time when you go to Dubai. I had so much fun when I went to Dubai, but there's still so many things that I didn't get to do. So, I still want to skydive. I, I kind of like, I don't want to say adrenaline junkie, but I kind of like a thrill. If you made it this far, I appreciate you. If you liked the video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and click that bell icon. And as always, I'd like to thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.